guys, it's Alicia. Now today we are getting this ready to go on a 2,500 mile trip cross country. One of the major things that we're gonna be doing on this is we're going to be repacking the wheel bearings. Um, this is fairly time consuming, but we're gonna show you how to do that. Well, my husband's gonna show you how to do that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repack the bearings. Um, now this is supposed to be done annually anyway, um, and so I figured it was probably a good time. Uh, to do that to inspect everything and make sure everything looks okay and then replace anything that needs to um, that needs to be replaced. So the things that you need um, in no particular order I have a set of extra bearings in case there's been in case there's wear and tear I'm gonna have to replace them. Um, this is the fourth and final wheel and I haven't found any damage to any of the bearings, so those will probably just stay um, until next year. You need uh, new seals, and I'll show you. Um, in order to get the old seal off and the, and the rear bearing out, you have to run the seal, uh, whether it's working or not. And so um, I have the seal, seal puller, wrench, pliers, needle nose, but I can't find mine so I'm using those. Um, I'm using this chisel to get the cap off and a hammer. Um, I've got a 2x4 over there we're going to use. New cotter pins. Some brake cleaner. Uh, this is extremely messy. Uh, so lots of gloves, lots of napkins, plenty of garbage space um, you're gonna need new grease you can get any kind as long as it's high temp um, high temp so this is high temp here I just got this at uh, this and the bearings and the seal at advanced auto care I believe is where it was so this is just a dust cap um, and so you know you have to jack up the trailer uh, pull the wheel off, make sure you're chalked correctly. Uh, you can use a little a little screwdriver here, but you just got to get in and start to separate this to get this dust cap off. And so now that I've done that, I'm going to get the gloves on. This would be a good opportunity to play a drinking game. So every time I change out gloves, take a drink, you'll have a good time. All right, so uh, this is a nut here and it's screwed into the axle and this is what keeps the, uh, the drum on. So you have to take that off and it screws on, but really the only thing that's keeping it on there is this cotter pin. So we gotta get that out. And this is where the needle nose come in a lot handier than pliers. <laughs> that worked out pretty good. So you take the cotter pin out. Uh, I was taught that you replace the cotter pin. Um, you know, you could look at this and it would be fine, but it's such an inexpensive piece. Um, and that's really what keeps your wheels on. So I put new ones on, so I'm just gonna throw that away. And then this just comes off. If you need, you know, if, if it's been put on there a little harder than that, you can use your wrench. So that's why that is. Um, oh, the other thing is I use a disc or brake cleaner, and it doesn't really get the oil off, it just loosens it up and makes it easier to clean. So I'm going to hit that with the, with the brake cleaner. So you got to be careful here. I just kind of do it in phases. So the next thing to come off is a washer. And I inspect everything just to make sure it's not showing crazy signs of wear. I mean, this is going at, you know, up to 70 miles an hour, so it's going to show some. 
but it's just kind of marked. It's not really scored or anything, so that's fine. Okay, and then the next thing to come out is the small bearing. And you notice how black that grease is. That grease doesn't go in that way. Uh, so even though there's nothing wrong with these, fingers crossed, um, this is why you always want to replace your or repack your bearings is to get that old grease out and put new uh, fresh grease in. So when you're doing this and the question comes up, well, how do I know what bearings to get? Um, the first one I did, I uh, cleaned it off real good and I took it into the shop and I said, uh, I need this replacement. I don't know if you can see on there though, it's got a serial number or a model number. And so you can get them online, you can get them at uh, CarQuest or Advanced Auto Parts or AutoZone or Napa, um, they all have them. And so really the death of these bearings is um, if you get grit in there. And so, you know, you spin them and as long as it's not sounding gritty, you're fine. And then I just inspect it to make sure there's no scoring marks or anything. And that looks fine. Okay, so now that the front piece is off, you can take this off. And I am by no means a mechanic, but you know, you just look to make sure there's nothing um, that looks like it's been grind grinding or burning. You know, you don't want to see any discolored metal, especially in here, and we'll show you that here in a bit. I guess I should have said the drinking game is for the paper towels, but you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> Dealer's choice. And I'll clean this up a little more. I'm just getting it an, an initial um, look. And I've seen this on one other, one other wheel. There's a little bit of grease inside, and I had uh, pumped grease into this the last time we took it out. And I think some just got past the seal. I don't think that's a sign of anything because there's absolutely no wear on that, um, which just shows the bearing. The bearings are doing their job. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the seal. And uh, again, you want to know what to add, what place piece to get. Um, and I took a picture of this because again it was it was all tore up when I pulled it off. So I just took a picture of it, took it in, and, and they were able to get me what I needed. So right now I'm just gonna get the initial grease out from in here. And again, you don't you don't want to get you don't want to have grit in your bearings. So ideally you would be doing this on a workbench. Um, I don't have that luxury. So I just try to uh, keep it as clean as I can. And again, your grease isn't supposed to be black. So, I mean, it's been doing its job, but it's definitely time for it to go. And now this is the part that uh, I flounder with. Um, I have seen on YouTube where you take, uh, if you imagine this is a, a flathead screwdriver, you can just put it in there and be real gentle and, and pop it up. Um, I bought a seal puller off of Amazon and it works. It's just really hard to get the leverage. Uh, you could probably put this in a vise if you had a shop vise um, and this would actually work really good. So I'll just work through this and get this seal off of here. So this is actually working better than it's ever worked. I guess I just need to film myself. <laughs> and you'll have to forgive the wheezing. I'm a overweight in my 40s, so it's to be expected. So that's the seal. You know, there's a metal, metal outer piece and a, the rubber gasket on the inside. Keeps the grease 
uh, on the axle and not in the brake, brake drum. Okay, so we did all that to get the rear bearing and it's bigger than the front one and the same deal. And again, the, uh, the numbers are right there. I don't see any scoring and it's not making any grinding noises so in my mind that's good uh, for another year to use. I'm going to go ahead and hit that so that can be loosening up. I'm just getting as much grease as I can out. Um, you know, the grease is, it's used, but it's clean, so I'm not worried about getting every little bit out. There is another thing that you could potentially have to replace, and they're called the races. And you see this, uh, this polished metal piece in here? That's what the bearing rides on. Um, and if you haven't done this, in a long time on your trailer or something's happening, there's no grease in there. These will be discolored or worn uh, from the heat or from grit. And if that's the case, then they need to be replaced. You can get that at the auto parts store too. So I assume that there's a, a serial number associated with that, or maybe it's they're based off the size of the bearing. But luckily, um, all, of, uh, all of our racers, or races have been, have been fine. So this is another thing that I got at uh, got off of Amazon. There's a lot of different types, but this is a, uh, a bearing, a bearing packer. Um, actually the first one I did, I, I used my hand. And I prefer this. Um, so that's the color of the grease I was using before the new, and I ran out. Uh, but this is typical what your new grease will look like. Um, they have the red, they have uh, kind of a clear clear tan, I've seen green, and then the stuff that I bought is just, uh, it's the color of sand. And uh, really there's not really a good way to do this. I guess I could use a scoop or something, but I'm just going to get in there. Caramel is actually what it looks like. Yeah. This is messy. I was watching guys on YouTube do it without gloves on. They were kind of old timers. It's like, well, I'd rather not do that. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you a little bit um, <clears throat> how it's done by hand. And from what I can tell, if you um, put your grease in the fridge or the freezer, beforehand this would work a lot better um, but really all you do is you just press down and I'll show you here in a second what I'm doing so I don't know if you can see the old grease is starting to come out of there mm -hmm. so and that's why it's called packing is you just you just work it and work it and work it until all the old grease is out and uh, it's been replaced with the new grease. As you can see, it's extremely messy, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. So we're just, we just got the grease in there is all that was. And so this is fairly simple. You take your bearing and you put it small side down so it fits in the cone. And I'm constantly cleaning my hands. I just screw the, it doesn't actually screw down, but I just do that to get the cone centered. And you just press, and I'll show you what it's doing here in a second. So you see what it's done. 
it's just pushing that old grease out by pushing down because it's got holes in it so it just it pushes the grease up through the bearing and uh, I'll do this it takes about three times um, before I don't see any old grease anymore and that may be overkill I don't know but that that's what makes sense to me and you can see it's squirting out of the bearings themselves too which is exactly what you want so this is my second time doing it and you can see that I've got almost all of the the old grease and you can't get all of it you'd have to completely clean it with solvent first um, but it's mostly clean grease now and so I'll wipe that out one more time and then um, hit it one more time and that should be it for the front bearing so I'm done with the first one and I suppose you could do this until there was absolutely no old grease um, but now the only old grease is just barely in, in the seams you can see it's clean now on the outside you know just a little bit of residue is all and I'll I put a little more grease on before I put the them back in the the drum um, but that's that's it for that one so I grabbed the the rear bearing and I placed it in there and I center it and it's just the same process I'm gonna push the old grease out three times well on the third time it'll be the last time I put new grease through that three times so it's clean now um, so now we get to uh, put it back together I'm not like crazy liberal with the grease um, but you do want to put more on so it has grease to ride on and not just in the bearings themselves too much and you'll have it um, get past the seal and it'll blow grease all over your hub or rim so again the you put the small end down so it fits in the race I'll put a little grease in there too So that's what a, a new seal looks like. And these actually have a little bit of a wax coating and I assume that's to help it go on and um, make a seal. So this is, uh, you wanna try to get it to go in as evenly as you can. Um, I don't think that putting it evenly is possible. There might be a tool for it, but I didn't, I wasn't able to find one. So I just use a, clean of major debris uh, two by four and a hammer to try to get as even as possible and you can't be gentle with it it, it needs force I just feel to make sure that it's uh, even and you can see where the the wax is kind of ribbing up there so that's it for the rear bearing and I don't put this on all at the same time uh, you can but you have to hold everything up in front so you just gently do this you want to make sure that you don't jam the uh, the axle into the seal I just do it real gently and then same thing with the front bearing um, I'm always doing that I want to make sure I got some grease in here first Nothing excessive. And again, the bearing goes in, small side in towards the axle. Don't forget this, I did that the first time.
There it goes. I don't think this is critical, but I, I try to get most of the old grease off. Now what I found on the other ones is uh, finger tight actually is works, um, but I'm sure that they're not all the same. So what you want to do is you want to get that um, at least start finger tight. And when uh, before I took this off, there was just a touch of play in there. Really, it was less so um, less than an eighth of an inch. So what I did on the other ones is I got a finger tight and then I backed it off. See, there's just a touch of play in there. Okay, so that's finger tight, and then I backed it off just enough to um, expose the hole that the cotter pin is going to go in. So keep in mind that this doesn't spin and this just needs to fit inside the dust cap so you don't have to trim that off as long as it doesn't impede this going on. So I'm just going to wipe the old grease out of this. Again this is not a critical component so you don't have to get it super clean. And I put this on the same way as the seal. Try to do even pressure. This goes on a lot easier. And that's it. That one's repacked. So the only thing left to do is to put the tire back on and then we gotta torque the lug nuts. So a couple of things to consider if you're new to trailer ownership. You're gonna have to buy a torque wrench um, because it's actually recommended that when you're on a trip over a couple hundred miles, that when you stop for the night, you should really retorque your, um, your lug nuts. And I did that the first trip we went on and I was shocked at how loose these had gotten. Um, so that's not, that's really not kidding around. And then the other key thing here, so we went on our merry way um, on our first trip and I figured, oh, I've got everything. I can just use the truck, the truck's uh, stuff to change a tire if I need to. But uh, vehicles, lug nuts are bigger than trailers. Uh, so we just lucked out. So you also need to buy a, uh, a lug wrench that fits the lugs for your trailer or you'll be stranded until somebody with a trailer comes along that has one. Uh, so you want to do the max, the manufacturer recommended torque on this, and on this one it's 100 foot-pounds. And you do it in a star pattern. Um, this is also, typically, your trailer will have a diagram on it. Showing uh, the pattern that they want you to use. And that's what a torque wrench does when you got it tight enough that it'll break and it makes that clicking noise. There you have it.